Hi, Dr. Cynthia. I appreciate having the opportunity to follow you on social media and to learn from you. And I appreciate the opportunity to share uh, part of my testimony for your Testimony Tuesday. And right now we are at South Sound Community Beach. Those are my children and my husband in the background. And we've had the opportunity to live here in Grand Cayman, Cayman Islands for just over five years now. My husband and I are both from Michigan and we've had quite a journey and we've been led by God through many trials and we feel very grateful for everything that he has brought us through. Back in 2010, my husband and I were married here on this island. We had a destination wedding on November 26, 2010. And neither of us were uh, born again Christians. I was raised Catholic and I believed in God. And I was taken away from the church because I didn't feel like I felt the presence of Jesus in my experiences within church. Two weeks after we were married here in Grand Cayman, I was back in Michigan and I was on the expressway on my way to work where I was at the start of my career as a doctor. I was in my residency at the time and due to abuse within the medical establishment, which is not uncommon, I was at a place on the expressway when a semi-truck hit my car at 65 miles per hour. He first hit me from behind. My car spun counterclockwise and the truck was coming directly towards my driver's side door. I thought he was going to hit me there and my car thankfully spun more and he ended up hitting me on the driver's side near my gas tank. The witness said that my vehicle went under the trailer of the semi-truck and there were two more points of impact to my car. Their left rear view mirror was hanging off and there was a hole through the front of the grill which I didn't know until after the fact. But I do remember us facing traffic oncoming and the trailer of the truck was still blocking the oncoming traffic, so they didn't know that I was facing them. So I just kept seeing car after car pass by me, and I was expected, I was expecting that I'd end up getting hit head on, and I was expecting that it was likely that I could die. I was praying during that moment and I was calling out to my dad who passed away in 2008 of a massive stroke at the age of 53. Um, by the sheer grace of God, <laughs> I can look back down, I can look back now and say that's why I survived my accident. When they wheeled me in, um, to the ER, that's when I started saying that I should be dead over and over again. But from the outside of my body, I looked fine. I didn't have any uh, blood, no cuts, no broken bones. Uh, the ER ended up sending me home after that, just not long after my accident. And by the end of the night, I was in extreme pain. My accident ended up taking me out of clinical medicine and it took me to the darkest moments of my life to a point where I didn't know who I was anymore. Everything that I had identified with had been stripped away from me. My health, I was, before I went to medical school, I was a certified personal trainer and group fitness instructor. My undergrad degree is in psychology but my health was taken from me. 
my residency in medicine was taken due to disability. Just refreshing my screen. Um, and my sense of who I was. I, I experienced so much loss through that accident. And I remember being in bed around the time that I ended up having spine surgery and I felt so alone. My in-laws were telling my husband just to divorce me. And there was a point where I said and shared on social media that I thought it would have been easier to die than to survive and go through what I was going through every day. In my darkest moments, though, that's when I heard that I wasn't alone and that I had God. And in those moments, I chose a journey of healing. And it's not been easy. Um, people haven't understood. I've had to do what was best for me in my walk in life. And I had to trust that there was a greater plan than my own. My husband and I ended up um, going to Macomb Christian Church in Michigan following that moment in bed where I realized that I wasn't alone. And then we ended up, in August of 2011, we ended up um, being baptized together. I was baptized as a baby, but at Macomb Christian Church, I was able to get baptized as an adult. And then I started writing, uh, which was suggested to me by my orthopedic spine specialist at the time. And that was a form of therapy for me. Um, it allowed me to be vulnerable which wasn't easy, and it allowed me to start opening up and sharing my journey. Lost people who I had thought were friends. I was distanced from people who, family members, as I continued to open up about my journey. And initially, I didn't share everything that I was going through. I was selective in what I shared. And that between writing blogs and then sharing on Facebook, my open journal, I just kept sharing and I kept writing and I kept allowing people to see my soul. About a year after, well, for my husband and my one year wedding anniversary, we came back to Grand Cayman and we renewed our wedding vows and we were thinking of moving somewhere warm because I spent seven months in bed in pain in Michigan. And it wasn't quality of life for anyone, let alone someone in their early 30s. We shared with the pastor who married us a year before what had happened, and he didn't know that we were talking about moving somewhere warmer, which would be better for my health. And after I shared with him everything that happened, he said that we were supposed to be here. And it just seemed like that was God leading us. We came back here for Easter when I was four and a half, five weeks pregnant with my son, who I got pregnant with what was like a year to the date after my lowest moment when I was laying in my bed, feeling all alone, coming to realize that I wasn't. We came back here and then we left here and we shared that we were gonna move here. We felt led here by God. So we sold everything we possibly could. We packed up, we <laughs> had people question, you know, if we were really going to follow where we were being led. 
and we ended up moving here when I was six months pregnant with my son Jack. My husband's job <laughs> then didn't pan out the way we had anticipated and I was dealing with medical legal issues from my accident. So then we faced near homelessness here on Grand Cayman. We lived in North Side, which is um, further out from town, and our marriage went through a lot of tests and trials, emotional affairs, continued stress from medical legal issues, continued stress from family members who didn't understand our walk in faith and who didn't respect our marriage and the fact that we were doing everything to stay committed to our vows. Right before we would have had to leave this island from my husband's um, three month temporary work permit, a position opened up with a Christian school here. So that kept us on the island. And God provided for us financially in a way which allowed us to stay here when my husband's work wasn't sufficient in terms of uh, providing for us with the cost of living on the island. And in addition to that, we dealt with um, some legalism within his work where we were being forced to attend a church where we didn't feel we belonged and we didn't feel that that's where God wanted us at that moment. And so we followed again where we were led to a different church. And at that time, um, that could have cost my husband his job, but we continued to listen to what we felt we were being led to do. Then God provided another job for my husband, which provided increased finances. It increased uh, medical care for both him and I, going through near homelessness and then going through um, not being able to care for my body because of not having the finance to do that. My body declined in health. Then recently, there's been so much that God has brought us through. Then recently we faced eviction from our home after being positive contributors to the community that we were living in. And it was actually on the news here because of that. And we ended up getting down to being three days from being homeless and Grand came in with two little ones and five cats that we care for. God used that trial for other people to be witness to my deep faith on Facebook. And he provided in ways that we didn't even know we needed it at the time. He took me out of feeling isolated because we lived further from town. And he answered so many prayers that had been spoken aloud and silently. <laughs> I look back. See a cruise ship? Yeah. Cool. Okay, give me a couple moments, kid. Uh, there's just been so much that God has done in our lives. He's taken individuals out of our life that We're not good for our marriage or the health of our family. Oh. 
and he has shown me I've tried so hard to rebuild my life since my accident. I've written, I've contributed to books, I created online courses, I've crossed paths with highly influential people. But God has shown me, especially over the last year, that if it isn't I think about Peter not being able to catch fish until Jesus showed up. And I've just really learned to surrender everything to God. I, it's been raining. As you can see, it's, um, well, that's really pretty. Um, I don't know if you can see. There's a cruise ship leaving town right now. That's beautiful. That gorgeous sunset. Um been raining here for the last week and I deal with chronic pain and my hands have been really um, hurting and I've just learned to give it all to God I feel like I've really come to a point within my spiritual walk where I realize that I just need to give him my life and every aspect of it and I've realized that I don't want to go through doors that aren't meant for me. I've given him my social media platforms. I have a, a page on Facebook where I've shared my journey. People shared, I, I wrote a book at the beginning of the year and I shared my whole journey, including my Facebook post because people along the way had been telling me that what I was sharing was helping them heal alongside me and I didn't really understand why or what they were seeing through what I was writing until I went back through and I wrote the book and it helped me and I could finally see the healing within what I was sharing and just the realness and the vulnerability and stuff that I wouldn't have shared prior to my accident before that truck knocked down all those walls. And I've given that community to God because I just don't want people to feel all alone like I did. That was such a terrible feeling just to be, to not realize that you're not alone and to not realize that you're loved and not, to not realize that you're worthy of the love that you give to other people. It's, it's, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful that God is using me. I'm grateful for how God is using so much loss and trauma to help other people. And I'm grateful for who he has molded me into. Here's the, here's the cruise tenders, I believe that they're called, the boats that carry the passengers at the port. It's amazing just to see so much beauty, even when there's darkness, to see light. I look back and I see how many times God was trying to really reach me and to finally gain a relationship in Christ and to understand that intimate relationship and to be able to experience peace even in moments of darkness and to feel joy during uncertainty. I, it's hard to even express just how much he has done. It's, I don't know what God's going to do <laughs> with me. I just turned 36. All I can hope is that he continues to use me in ways that far exceed anything that I could ever imagine.
thanks for listening. <laughs> this went longer than I had anticipated. I would have typed it, but my hands are so painful and I felt led to share with your invite. Thank you for serving the way that you do. You remind me so much of my grandma who had a huge influence on me and she passed away when I was only 17 and she was only 64, but all of her kitchen table talks and all of her non-judgmental love and listening made such a huge difference in my life and I'm seeing how that wisdom and love can shape others. I hope you have a wonderful week. May God bless you. Thank you for listening to me. I hope I conveyed how much I love God and how much he has shown he loves me. God bless.